everyone, yeah. make sure you watch this whole video. It helps us out. Thank you. Focus. See, I'll, I'll, I just cut that in at the beginning. But get in with me. I mean, you can you can go back and forth between us. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So, hi, I'm Doug Tenapel. I'm here with my daughter, Ami. Hi. And we're doing a watercolor, ink and watercolor of Carrie Lake. It's just an experiment, so not a big deal. This will take about an hour, and then we're going to have a little conversation about art, family, college, goofing around. That's okay. I didn't mean for that to be heard. So what I try to do is get as much of the likeness as I can from the photographic reference trace down and then, but still exaggerate and cartoon as needed because I like exaggeration in my work. Then it just ends up not looking like them, so. <laughs> So, Ami, tell them about you. How old are you? Well, I just turned 21, so that's you're, about it. You're in, <laughs> so then everyone's going to go, oh, you're in college. Yes, I'm in college. I'm at Lipscomb University, and I'm a nursing student. I just thought, hey, I really love the idea of in-person care, um, and nursing was... How many of, of your friends have kept their major from what they first started? Did they have a better idea of what they wanted to do? Um, I, it's been 50, 50. Most of my friends know what they want to do and are able to use their major to work towards a goal. So if they don't enjoy their major as much, they know where their major will take them or they've switched it. A lot of our audience are seniors. What do you know about senior care? Like, like take, geriatric care? Yeah. Um, like taking care of yourself, what they should be doing and looking for yeah. from a medical standpoint. I love taking care of Old, the older generation. And a lot of our post-op patients come in with issues mostly cardiac related. Um, so cardiac and taking care of diet, diabetes is like a big, two of the biggest things, but cardiac is number one. It's mostly about prevention as much as possible because yeah. recovery with chronic conditions and stuff like that isn't, isn't great. So a lot of it is just going to be so if someone is already too late, let's say they're obese, yeah. they, they don't get out and What's move. What's most of my patients? Um, let's talk about your art, though, because you're also an artist. You, uh, got, you have I done some art. I, I've dabbled before. I'm not really an art person. Per se. Right, but you can draw. I can draw. You just don't have what Chesterton calls, and he, he meant it as an insult. An obsession? The, no, the art, the artist's uh, temperament, meaning they're people that act creative, whether they are good at art or not. You're not a, a funky girl with blue hair. I can't finish anything. And so I sit there, and like the last five hours of something is just me like, gotta finish, gotta finish, gotta finish, and I can't. And yet you're, you're better at art than most. Like someone off the streets, if you went up to them, you'd be able to outdraw them any day. Mm, I don't know about that. Uh, people on the streets, I'm saying. Other people. If we, if I had a reference to use, maybe, and I had 10 hours. I'm using, I'm using reference. Well, and the same thing with, uh, you've learned instruments. So tell them about the instruments that you know. Yeah, I used to play violin and piano. Used um, to? classic art thing where around the middle they it's there's three different colors around the middle they tend to go red um, across the top they tend to go yellow and across the bottom they tend to go blue with your colors that's just an old art uh, 
formula that artists use, and I see them use it all the time. Do you think I should tell a fun story? No. About the time I saw a monkey in the hospital? Yes. That's what I thought. I saw a monkey in the hospital the other day, um, and by the other day, I mean probably like two months ago. Um, we were finishing our ward in or our rounds in the psychiatric ward. We went to the bathroom to wash our hands, and a couple of people had gone in there before me. They saw like a tail or something. They're like, "Wow, someone has their dog in here." <laughs> and other people heard voices. And I went in and I saw like these curled up little like brown feet, and I was like, "Whose feet Gross. curl like that?" And I was like, who's barefoot sitting on the floor of a bathroom? I'm like, they're not okay. And I heard like mumbling. I was like, I gotta go and tell my instructor. They might not be okay. Um, we're in a hospital, so it's the best place to take care of people. And when I came out of the bathroom, she goes, are they still in there? I'm like, what do you mean? Um, and so she ended up knocking on the door because she heard two people talking, referring to a child. And so she thought, We've got some human trafficking here. If you see something, you say something. It's your duty to report it. So we knocked on the stall. We're like, is everything okay in there? And uh, woo, woo, woo. a guy and a girl open up the door and they're like, we're leaving, we're leaving. We're like, we didn't ask you to leave. Do you need help? And they're like, no, we're leaving. And they pick up, this guy picks up this monkey in his hands and it's like the size of a five-year-old child. <laughs> This is like a, a full chimpanzee or like a marmoset? Like or? a chimpanzee sized wearing a red tracksuit. What I saw <laughs> sitting on the ground was a monkey. Wearing a red tracksuit, calling it their child. <laughs> they had been changing this monkey's diaper. watch movies some you watch I youtube really oh you watch youtube channels i do so let's talk about what you like to watch on youtube since these people are watching a youtube art it channel. depends if who's the chick there's two chicks that uh make craft clothes. love them they're fun to watch when you need to pay attention to something and need to relax but two are the two girls they're really good yeah my Kara tours is really funny and rachel maxi is also really funny yeah very good Just you know, when they do yeah, two guys been, eating cockroaches or trying cereal. They did that since, like, what, 2005, 2007? Yeah. So, yeah, they're early, early people. I didn't really get to watch until, well, whenever I got a laptop. Sophomore year of high school? Yeah, I think that's when I first started getting on YouTube. Uh huh. Well, you also got to figure people, they, they're growing up online. I just saw um, a thing on them where... Their stuff, and it wasn't good mythical morning either, so it wasn't their oh, new really? stuff, it was their original hmm. show. Doing that. I, don't that means. I don't think they ever gave it up. I don't keep up with the big YouTubers. I think I missed like all of there was a trend for like Unis Anis was the one year sort of experiment on like can you keep a channel up for one year and have a whole bunch of like people watching and then delete it and see what happens so was that mark plier on that one mark plier and ethan nester or crank gameplays i think yeah so i missed the well rachel maxi we can cut this in with the youtubers too rachel maxi does like the little few seconds of bloopers at the end of her video and those are just fun makes her seem like a human yeah. being so uh if i can get someone to stay to the end of the video i'll be rocking wouldn't that be great incentive once people figure it out Hey everyone, amazing bloopers video. at the end. Watch my daughter stab me. <laughs> See, they would stay for that. And I would even That's just clickbait though. But I would even let you stab me if they stayed. That's how important <laughs> it is to me. You can just do a, an exacto and you throw it, you what's this for? And then have it just stick in my hand. I know ah! what an, But I know what an exacto blade is. That would just make me look stupid. <laughs> And irresponsible. I can't have that Remember, on my record if, as if a caretaker. My rule is you can't care about looking stupid. If <laughs>
So this is my daughter. Never thought I'd have kids. I have four. She's my oldest. Of he four. overshot it. I overshot. It. <laughs> well, I didn't want to have kids, and then I thought when Angie and I were married ten years, we said, you know, something's missing. So we realized it was kids. So we had her. And then I go, we are gonna have more. She goes, because every time we were gonna have kids, she was the reluctant one. So she goes, yeah, ah. no kidding. <laughs> she goes, she goes, we'll have to see. And then by the time you were done, she was ready for another. She goes, okay. I was done with what? Incubating? <laughs> uh, just when, when you have a kid and you see that you didn't die, the kid didn't die and the mom didn't die and the dad didn't die. Because when not you always true, though. No, but when you first get married and you consider having kids, you just think, everything's going to be ruined. My life's going to be completely ruined. I'm going to die. Like, I'm going to lose myself. And then you have the kid and you go, oh, no. It just added great things to my life. Love my own ability to give to someone else. It's amazing. It's a miracle. Then you, your eyes are opened up to what a kid. Same thing with marriage. Your eyes are open to what marriage is when you get married. Considering marriage before you get married is different than after those of you who are married know this and considering kids before you have kids is different than after you have them you guys don't have kids now that's all that's that's a watercolor of carrie lake about as good as we could do